We love our Seahawks, don't we? <laughs> now we're going to see a miracle, 12-minute sermon in honor of the 12th man. And if you've been watching the Seahawks games, there's something that happens that in almost every game, whenever one of those Christian athletes scores a touchdown or after the game, what's the first thing they do? They say, first and foremost, I want to thank the Lord Jesus Christ and give him honor for everything in my life. Then the second thing they say is, why would you send a mediocre receiver like that in my territory, right? <laughs> then the third thing they say is, I want to thank the 12th man. Because when, when they want to give up, after the last Super Bowl that I was at with the um, Seahawks, uh, the Pittsburgh fans outdid us. They brought their towels. They, they yelled louder than we did. The 12th man decided to, to have a new birth and to be more determined. After the Seahawks are discouraged and they want to give up, the 12th man cries out and they, they get more energy and more vitality from the 12th man. And it just has uh, energized the entire area. And so there's this phenomena that's going on that we've never seen before in the history of this area. Those of us that have, have been raised in Washington State, we've never seen anything like this. I mean, they, last week they named Mount Rainier after the 12th man, didn't they? Or after the Seahawks. And they named Issaquah, they renamed Issaquah into the 12th man city just for a day or so. And everywhere you go, you see people wearing Seahawks gear, right? Right? Look around. Ray thinks he's Russell Wilson. <laughs> and you see people of all ages, all backgrounds, wearing Seahawks gear. In fact, the other day I stopped by to get some gas. I went in to get a cup of coffee. And there was a lady, and she was all decked out from head to toe in Seahawks gear. She was an older lady, too old to even work at a... At a convenience store, and she had the Seahawks hat on, a little crooked. She had uh, Marshawn Lynch's number on, and I went over and I said, do you got some um, coffee here? And she said, yeah, dog. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, is it good? And she said, she didn't say it, these words, she said, dang straight. <laughs> and I, the whole time she was talking to me, um, I thought it was like Marshawn Lynch's voice coming out of this sweet little old lady. It's invaded the whole area, the 12th man. And I just want to have a 12 minute sermon. The Gettysburg Address was three minutes, 270 words at a time when our nation was ready to quit by a president that knew what it meant to refuse to quit Abraham Lincoln. When he was young, his mom died. and It was his whole life. His stepmom died later. He failed in business. Two or three times he went bankrupt, failing in business. Almost every office he ran for, he failed and lost. He ran for vice president four years before he became president. He lost. He ran for the Senate. He ran for Congress. He lost. Um, his little boy died. He lost his little boy. He went through an emotional breakdown. His wife went through an emotional breakdown. After a lifetime of losses and refusing to quit, Abraham Lincoln in 1860 became the president of the United States. And he had a grit, and he had a determination, and he had a faith that at its very basic foundation is something that I want all of us to have, and that he refused to never, never, never give up. He's refused to quit. Now, that's a hard thing to do, to never give up. It's easy to give up on the important things of life. It's easy to give up on yourself. It's easy to give up on even believing in God. That's a hard thing to do. Each one of these individuals told stories of the grit that they have. And to be a football player, I mean, you're doing the hard thing. It'd be easy for Russell Wilson to turn and run the opposite direction, right? Right? One of the most courageous things for anyone that's played football before was the guy that, the little known guy that was the long snapper from Texas. Because the long snappers are usually little guys. That's a skill position. They've got two guys that weigh 400 pounds. They're going to crunch them every time they snap the ball for a field goal or for a punt. And they do the hard thing. They hang in there. And he started this 
nonprofit foundation to spread the good news of Jesus Christ because he's doing the hard thing. Now, the easy thing is to run. The easy thing is to give up on yourself. But the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In other words, Jesus Christ never gives up on us. And we want to give up. But there's a, we want, I want you to do the hard thing and not the easy thing. And that is to do what these guys did and to give up to Jesus Christ. To surrender to him. To give up the wrong things in our lives. The things where we get stubborn, where we get prideful. And to say, I only want it God's way. And on that, I'll never, ever, ever give up. While Disney went bankrupt, eight times before we had the Disney phenomena. Coca-Cola only sold 300 bottles their first year. Michael Jordan was cut from basketball when he was in high school before he became one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Babe Ruth struck out more than anyone in history, but he had a lot of home runs. Dennis Rodman wore a wedding dress at his wedding with lipstick before he became a terrible ambassador to Korea. Oh, let's forget that one. <laughs> but the main thing is, if we're the 12th man, there's something when someone cheers for you. We put on the armor of Jesus Christ. Everyone puts on the 12th man gear. And we stand not for ourselves, but for Jesus Christ. And that's what all those guys in that video were doing. They're giving the honor to Jesus Christ. They're supported by Jesus Christ. They're refusing to give up. So on this amazing weekend, we've never had one before like this. It's an amazing weekend in my life because I'm waiting for my next granddaughter to hold her in my hands. And that should change my life, right? Coming at halftime. <laughs> this is an amazing weekend. It could be the time when you realized you wanted to be the 12th man and to never give up on the things that are right. We'll give up on the things that are wrong. But we'll never, ever give up on the things that are right. That's a big point. Russell Wilson, if you know that whole story, we have to be proud to have a, a, a guy like that in this area, right? His father was a pro football player, caught one touchdown pass, was his hero. And he did throw passes to his dad because his dad was a receiver and his brother was a receiver. But his dad also had diabetes. And when he had that dream that his dad died, his dad was going into a coma from a diabetes. And they thought he was going to die. And the family said, you don't know what a fighter our dad is. And he fought his way back. But he used that point to give up. To give up to God, to surrender to Jesus Christ, to become a born-again Christian. And that giving up the, in the right way made him a person that never gives up in the way that most people do. The separation is in the preparation. The hard work, the resolve that we wish we could fuse into every one of our friends and every one of our family and to everyone else comes from that strength of being the 12th man and knowing that we wear not just the colors of the Seahawks, we wear the colors of Jesus Christ. He's with us. He stands for us. We represent him. We can go to him just as everyone there said is that he's with us because he doesn't give up on us and we have the strength to never, ever, ever give up. I want to tell you and testify for you. I'm never, ever going to give up on my friends when I say I'm your friend for the rest of my life. I'm never, ever, ever going to give up on the dream of building a great caring network and seeing Christianity be part of bringing this community together, not just another religion. I'm never, ever, ever going to give up on my family, the people I love, and my Lord Jesus Christ until the day I die. I'm going to give up on the wrong things when I've made mistakes. I've got a lot to learn. And if you know me now, you won't know me in the future. 
Because I'm going to keep giving up to Jesus Christ when he points out things that are wrong. And I'm going to change because I want his way. And this can be the week. This can be the time when you become the 12th man and you say, I'm never, ever, ever going to give up on the things that God has for me. Would you stand with me for a closing benediction? Now unto him who is able to keep you and to make you strong. To do far more than you could ever ask or imagine. God, we've tried to operate in the difficulty of life without that strength and that integrity and that resolve that comes whenever we give up to you. And we make a stand that we're not giving up on anything that's right. People are so flighty. Life can be so misdirected. We thank you for what's going on in our area. We thank you how people are talking. We thank you how we all feel like we're a part of the same team and the 12th man. And God, we ask that in this holy weekend that you could infuse in us some of that same kind of strength. It would come through faith. It would come from you working in our lives. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.